Section 6.2, Part 2. Examples. For the following, match the function to the graphs. So we have a group of functions, graphs, and we need to match them to the below functions. So the first function, for example, here. Okay. So in order to match these, first we're going to look at two characteristics. One is the y-intercept, whether it is 2 or 4. So that is one of the identifiers. The next characteristics is going to be whether the b is greater than 1 or the b is less than 1. So if it's less than 1, the graph is going to be a decay graph. If it's greater than 1, it's going to be a growth graph. And then the bigger the base, the closer it is going to be to the y-axis. So, for example, I want to identify d. So first I want to identify d. d has a y-intercept of 4, and it's a growth function. So I know that the y-intercept is 4. Here is 1, and here is another 1. So which one is it? The base has to be bigger than 1. Bigger than 1, not 0. So in this case, I know it's a growth function, so the base has to be bigger than 1, which is not this one, so it's going to be that one. So here is D. Now, C is the same, has the same y-intercept, which is 4, so has the same y-intercept. However, it is a decay function, so I know it is the other option here. So that is C. Now, the rest of the functions, let's uh, start with A now. A is a decay function and has a y-intercept of 2 and it is the farthest from the uh, y-axis. So the, it is going to be the smallest base and the base has to be less than 1 and the y-intercept is 2. So we have this base that is less than 1 with a y-intercept of 2 and we have this base of uh, less than 1 and with a y-intercept of 2. So we said it is the smallest of them. I noticed that this is smaller than that. So I'm going to go with this is A since it's the farthest from the y-axis. Now B. B is also a decay function, which means the base is less than 1. And I know that the y-intercept is 2. So I have one option, which is this option right here. So this is going to be base. Uh, that is going to be function B. And then if we go to function E, function E, as you can see, it's a growth function. It is a growth function with a y-intercept of 2, and it is closer to the y-axis, which means the base is higher than the other one. So I have between this and that, and the higher base is this one right here. It has a higher base than that one, which means this is going to be function E. And the last one, function F, you notice here it has the same y-intercept, which is 2. However, it is farther away from the y-axis, which means the base is going to be smaller than E by comparison. So that is going to be function F. So that is how you're going to identify these functions. The last piece here is we need to know how to graph a transformed function if we were given the transformation and write an equation for that function. The last step here would be to find the equation for a transformed function. So if the, if the graph is a transformed function of f of x equals to 2 raised to the x power, we want to write an equation describing the transformation. So if we look at the first graph right here, notice how this graph has flipped um, or reflected across the x-axis and then it shifted up. Notice the first thing we can see here that the horizontal asymptote for this function is the line y equals to 1. So we can write this equation or this function in the form f of x or y equals to a times b to the x power plus, let's say, D, which is basically the vertical shift. 
In this case, we know that b is equal to 2 because we know that the function is a transformation of the original function or the parent function f of x is equal to 2 raised to the x power. So we can rewrite the function as y equals 2 a times 2 to the x power. And we know that the transformation is uh, the vertical shift of one unit, so d is going to be equal to 1. Now, in order to find a, we're going to use a convenient point. The best point to use here is the y-intercept. So the y-intercept in our case is 0 and negative 3. We're going to substitute x with 0 and y with negative 3. So we have negative 3 equals to a times 2 to the 0 power plus 1. And that will lead to negative 3 equals to a times 2 to the 0 is 1. So a times 1 is a plus 1. Now we're going to solve for a by subtracting 1 from both sides. We get a equals negative 4, which means the final function is going to be f of x or y. It doesn't matter which notation you use. Is equal to negative 4 times 2 to the x power plus 1. And that is the final answer for the first part right here. In a similar manner, we're going to figure out the equation of the second graph here. Notice how this is basically a decay function reflected over the x-axis. So we know that the function is going to be f of x equals to a times b to the x power plus some d. Because this is a decay function, we're going to say that b is equal to 1 over 2 in this specific case. Or in other words, we can say this is a reflection over the y-axis, which will turn the x into negative x. And then, let's do it that way. So we can say this is a reflection over the y-axis, followed by a reflection over the x-axis and a shift upwards, or vertical shift. The horizontal asymptote is going to be the line y equals 3. And then because of the horizontal reflection and the vertical reflection that we have here we know that the function is going to take the shape a times 2 to the negative x and then plus 3. To find a we're going to use a convenient point again the y-intercept is the best point to use so we're going to use that point which is 0 and 1 we're going to substitute x with, with 0 and y with 1. So we get 1 equals to a times 2 to the 0 power plus 3. We know that this is equal to 1. So it's going to be 1 equals to a times 1 plus 3. And that will lead to a equals negative 2. So the transformed function is going to be f of x equals to negative 2 times 2 to the negative x and then plus 3 or we can rewrite it as negative 2 times 1 over 2 to the x power same concept plus 3 it's basically the same concept here so if you uh, if you distribute the the negative x or the negative 1 inside it's going to be 2 to the negative 1 all to the x power which is we know 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half, and that is why we came up with this last formation, or this last form. So that is the final answer for this graph. To verify, you can go to Desmos, and you can graph this function. You can say that f of x equals 2, negative 2, raised to the power of negative x, and then plus 3. As you can see here, the graph matches the graph that we have. Uh, to make sure that the asymptote is um, equal to 3, I'm going to say equals 3, y equals to 3, and I'm going to make it a dotted line here. So, so it matches exactly the graph that we have, confirming our equation is correct. So that is the end of section 6.2. If you have any questions, let me know.